All right, gamers, today I'm gonna to show you how to set a guide bushing. We got our L20. Some of you have asked in the comments, how do you set your guide bushing? How tight should my guide bushing be? And the answer is beautifully simple and frustratingly complicated. And the answer is, it depends. So let me show you. And while I'm walking you through the process, I'll give you some pointers and things to look out for so that you can make your machine run good parts for a change. We got our guide bushing here, half inch. We're gonna use a piece of half inch aluminum as a test bar for today. You should know how to do this. If you're setting up a lathe, if you're watching this video, give your collet a quick wipe down. And then uh, some of you might call this a pro gamer move. You're gonna take your fingers and you're gonna stick them inside the guide bearing and you're gonna find the little nub sticking out in there. And you're just gonna remember where that's at because that has to line up with the slot on our guide bushing. Do not force these in. Do not force them, do not hammer them. You do not need to force it. If you have to force it, something's wrong. Maybe try putting some lube on there to help it slip in. But we've got our stud aligned. We're gonna take our guide bushing, slide it in, easy peasy. We're gonna take our nut, we're gonna put it on the back, and we're just gonna get it started a handful of turns by hand. We're not tightening it down at this point. Find it up a little bit there. There's some good guide bushing. Wipe it out again. That's what you don't want. Push it back in, try it again. The nut should spin on freely. If it's not spinning on freely, either you've got it cross-threaded or you've got damaged threads in one of them, but everything should just go together smoothly by hand. You shouldn't have to force it. All right. So now we've got the components loosely assembled. They are sliding back and forth inside the guide bearing. They're nice and loose. We're gonna grab our bar, wipe it off real quick. You don't wanna set your guide bushing on dirty material. Wipe it off, clean it up. And we're just going to, there we go. Ha. Slide it through the guide bushing. Wear doesn't matter. You'll want to set it on a, a nice consistent piece of material. It's a Swiss lathe. Your material should be nicely cold drawn or ground preferably. I get sometimes it's not. You got sheared ends to deal with. Don't set it on a nipped end or a deformed end or something like that. Get a good consistent section of material to set your guide bushing on. Take a wrench. Two wrenches, pair of wrenches, one for the front, one for the back. Get the wrench on there, get the wrench on there, and you start screwing it on there. And then you'll feel it, and this is where that it depends that I mentioned in the intro comes in. The type of material, the size of material, your chucking length all matter for how tight you're gonna set your guide bushing. Larger diameter bars, you can set it tighter, your pads are bigger in your guide bushing, you have more surface area to spread out that force, you can set it a little bit tighter. Small diameter material, soft material, non-ferrous materials, plastic especially is very finicky about it. If you, if you tighten it too much, you will either gall the material, you'll gouge material out, the pads will gouge material as you're pulling back through, or with plastics and things like that, if you set it too tight, the material will actually compress while it's being fed through. It'll compress, 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 and then pop through. And you'll see grooves or ridges in the OD of your turned part or the ID of your turned part. And that is something to look for to let you know your guide bushing is too tight. Usually you'll hear it through, you'll hear it creaking or popping through the guide bushing. If you're running plastic and it's too tight, just loosen it off a little bit. So when we're setting it, you will feel the tightness change. So right now we're we're just screwing that nut down on there. Everything's happy, everything feels good. We're just gonna keep screwing it tighter and tighter until we feel it actually start to snug down and get tight. Okay, there we go, I just felt it. I'm gonna back it off a little bit. There, you'll feel it draw that taper on the guide bushing down. You'll feel it draw down on the material and squeeze down. And I'm just going 
until it feels right. And you just have to know what it feeling right feels like. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm not going hard. I'm just putting good pressure on it with one hand, tighten it down, tighten it down, and you'll feel it. You'll feel it snug down and stop. And to get it to go more, you'll have to really crank on it. But you don't want to do that unless you're running large diameter material or you're running hard material where you don't have to worry about your guide bushing, galling, or gouging material out. So for like your copper, uh, brass, plastics especially, you would you would just go, you wouldn't even go until it stopped. You would feel it, you'd feel it start to snug down, you'd feel it tighten down. And just before it gets tight and it wants to stop, you would stop tightening it. And so there's a couple things you can you can look for, you can feel for once you've got it, where you think it's good. So it's in there. Take your wrench out. Always double check your wrenches out. Do not leave your wrench in there and turn the spindle on. It'll make horrible noises. And uh, if you're lucky, it'll unscrew the guide bushing. If you're not lucky, it'll screw that guide bushing on there so tight, you'll have to cut the whole thing out with a die grinder. Done it. Nice. So one of the quick and easy, dirty things you can do to see if your guide bushing is gonna be good enough to get you started. A good starting point to running material, running parts. Close your main chuck and just jog, jog your bar back and forth a little bit. So I can see I've got some, some marks where it's contacting the surface. Sure, I can pull it back. It's not, it's not peeling up material. It's not gouging material out of the OD of the bar. So I know I'm not too tight. My, my guide bushing pads aren't compressed down into the material where it's gouging material out. And then get two fingers on it and feel it as you move it back and forth. You've got three, three diameters here. You've got your guide bearing housing. You've got your bearing stack in the middle and then you've got your guide bushing. So you should not feel any movement between your guide bushing and your guide bearing. You should be able to put your finger on there, jog it back and forth. You should not feel the guide bushing moving back and forth in the guide bearing, depending on the shop you're in. For running steel, most aluminums, unless you've got really like running like pure aluminum, finicky things like that, uh, copper. For running most of your reasonably hard materials, your all your steels, your harder aluminum, 60, 61, 70, 75, even like your heat treated 2024. It is okay and desirable to feel a little bit of movement of the bearings in the housing. You feel that bearing stack moving a little bit. That's the backlash in the guide bearing. And then if you feel that, and I feel just a, a thousand, a couple thousands of movement, I can just barely perceive that guide bearing moving back and forth in the housing. So that lets me know that I'm getting good pressure to where it's moving a little bit. If you feel it moving a lot, if you're jogging it back and forth and you really feel it chunking back and forth, it's too tight. Back it off a little bit. You know, small diameter material, you shouldn't really be able to feel it moving. But I'm gonna call this good. Like I said, there's no there is no movement of the guide bushing in the guide bearing, and there's just the tiniest perception of movement of the guide bearing in that in the guide bearing housing. And you just all it is, you just get your fingers on it, you just jog Z1, just back and forth a little bit, and you're just feeling for that little bit of tension in there. So I'm calling that good. Take your wrench, tighten down the set screw on the back of the guide bearing nut. And that's a good starting point. Once you get running, there's things you can look for. Is your part round? Realistically, unless you have terrible material or your machine is just has shot bearings, you should not see more than a tenth or two of out of round in your part. Solid parts, exceptions for thin wall parts, things like that, material springs. But for solid parts, you shouldn't see more than a tenth two tenths at the most of out of round. Assuming your material's not horrendously out of round, 
and your bearings aren't shot. So if you're seeing a lot of, you know, out of round egg shaped parts, you know, inconsistent diameters sometimes, especially if it's tapering, your guide bushing might be too loose. If you're getting, if it's trying to pull the bar back, right now we have a left hand cutoff in there, so it's gonna pull the bar back before it runs the facing pass with tool three. So if it goes to pull the bar back and it peels up rolls of material against the carbide pads of the guide bushing, <clears throat> it's too tight. You either have too large of a guide bushing or you set it too tight or both. I think Hardinge mentions it. So these guide bushings are only designed to collapse down two thousandths of an inch. So if you have a 500 guide bushing, which is what we have, half inch, you can run material 500 thousandths to 498 thousandths reliably. You can get a little bit smaller, but then you really have to worry about that, that pad collapsing down and instead of your pad walls being parallel supporting the material, you have to squeeze it down so much that they actually tip in at the front. And then that's when you're, you're pulling your bar back through there, those sharp edges are gonna grab material and peel off curls of material and jam up. So 2000s, so if you're running tool steel, most of that comes oversized. You can't run oversized material through your guide bushing. You have a half inch guide bushing, the most you can really get away with is like 501, and you're not even supposed to do that. Your material really has to be sized correctly for the guide bushing. If you're running tool steel, which usually comes 13 to 15 thousandths oversized, you gotta get an oversized guide bushing. You have to have a 515 or a 513 guide bushing to run half inch tool steel. Aluminum, drawn aluminum is wildly variable. We get you know, nominal, we run, we used to run a lot of tube. We stopped running tube because we could not get consistent diameters. We would order one inch tube and it might be 990. It might be one inch seven. It might be one inch 10. It might be 994. It might be all those numbers on the same bar. So we switched to solid. So we get more consistent bars, but we also got a one inch seven guide bushing, a one inch 10 guide bushing, a one inch seven guide bushing. We got the whole range of sizes to fit that variable material because they can only collapse so far before you start running into issues. So a minute ago, I made a claim about one or two thousandths of movement. And so as a, a point of professional pride, I'm gonna put an indicator on it just to see, uh, just so I can back up my, my claims with facts. We will just see how much movement we're actually getting. As I said, one to two thou, that's not a lot. That's pretty precise. That's pretty exact numbers I gave. So we'll see if I can walk the walk. That's a thou, pretty damn close. So, so for any of you nerds that want exact numbers that can't do things by feel, there you go. A thou of lash in your guide bearings. So there you go. Like I said in the beginning, it depends. It depends on what you're doing, depends on your material. So you should have some good info now on a good starting point and some things to watch out for and some symptoms of an incorrectly set guide bushing. So if you found that useful, if you like that, if you wanna see more of me, if you just like looking at my face, like, subscribe, stay tuned for the next one. And I don't care if the kids don't say stay tuned for the next one anymore. I'm 29, I'll say whatever I want. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong.